All right, welcome back to another episode. In this episode, we're gonna talk about shoulder impingement syndrome, otherwise known as SIS. We're gonna talk about what it is, some of the causes or risk factors, and finally, what to do to help fix it. Shoulder impingement syndrome is any kind of compression of certain structures under the shoulder. It can be primary or secondary. Primary is more variations in our anatomy, whereas secondary, what we'll focus on, is more related to instability of the shoulder or biomechanical deficits. So the biomechanics of the shoulder we're looking at, well, it's not quite the like, ball and socket you'd think of, something really nice and stable. It's more like a golf ball sitting on a tee, okay? So not very stable, not a lot of surface area that that's gonna be attaching into, so it depends a lot more on our muscles and, and the joints and ligaments surrounding the shoulder to keep it nice and stable. So it's really kind of prone to errors, so to speak, if the muscles aren't working properly or they're not trained up properly. What are some of the first signs or symptoms that you're gonna experience? Well, most people early on with this are gonna start experiencing pain on the outside of their shoulder, probably kind of towards the top of the outside of the shoulder, but it will kind of radiate down the shoulder, almost like thinking you have some deltoid pain. As it progresses, you may even experience pain in the front of the shoulder or back, but usually it's most common to experience symptoms in the outside, then maybe in the front, and finally possibly in the back of the shoulder. Okay, so say you've started to notice these symptoms, but you're not sure if you have this shoulder impingement syndrome or something else. Well, the most important thing to rule out is a rotator cuff injury. So one way that we look at that right off the bat is, is this like a chronic kind of overusing or is this a traumatic fall? If you've had a more of a traumatic fall or you did a really weird move and had immediate pain, it may be more likely that you have a rotator cuff injury, but there are other ways to tell. With shoulder impingement syndrome, you may not have as much of a weakness as you would with a rotator cuff injury or tear. So the first thing to do is just gonna be to, to do your strength testing in different positions. For example, one of them that can be used for both is testing your external rotation strength. So whether you simply resist yourself, like so my right arm would be pushing out, or you decide to push into a wall, with shoulder impingement syndrome, you may have pain, but it won't feel super weak. If you have a rotator cuff injury, this is gonna feel really weak. So the next step with that is gonna be to have someone help you take your arm further out into external rotation and then let them release that arm. If your arm slides back in, we call that the external rotation lag sign, that's an external rotation injury, that's a rotator cuff injury, not a shoulder impingement injury. Secondly, we're gonna go and look at what we call the painful arc, okay? So if you have a rotator cuff injury, you may not even be able to get your arm up to this height. We have what we call the drop arm sign where if we have someone help us, they take us into this position here. So imagine they're supporting my arm right now and they let go. If it's really painful and my arm starts to drop down, that's the drop arm sign. That's a sign of a rotator cuff injury. Vice versa, if you can go through this full range of motion and you don't have pain, that's a negative, which is a good sign. But if you have pain from what we call 60 to about 120 degrees, then it goes away and feels better. That's the painful arc sign. So just as a recap, pain-free, 60 degrees, you start to have some pain, but you can kind of push through it. 120 degrees, the pain goes away and you can finish out. That's the, the painful arc sign. That's a sign for shoulder impingement syndrome. Okay, so the third one we look at is called the Hawkins-Kennedy test. So this test can be a little uncomfortable regardless of your shoulder health. So you wanna test it on both sides. If you have a right shoulder injury, you wanna test the left shoulder first. So what we wanna do is we bring our arm up to the shoulder height, our elbows at 45 degrees away from our body, so not straight ahead, not out to 90. And then we just go from the wrist and we cause some internal rotation. So I'm putting pressure down and in. Now this feels a little tight, but not painful. Second, we bring it in so it is straight in front of you and do that again. So a little bit less range of motion, a little bit more discomfort, but no like replication of any symptoms. Then we test it on the other side. 
always start at the 45 because it's going to be less painful. If you start and you have pain, don't push through it. That's another sign. You don't need to come into here. This one is a little bit more intense. So if you don't have pain at 45, then you can try it straight ahead. But if you do have pain at 45, just stop there. So what do we do to fix this injury? So fixing this injury can be a little bit complicated because as we mentioned earlier, it could be an instability or it could be a mechanical issue. The first thing that you can try and do, the low hanging fruit, so to speak, is gonna to be to work on your external rotation strength because that's what a lot of people have a deficit with. And to do that, just go ahead and check out our other video on our nice external rotator strength exercises and work on that rotator cuff. If you are having more and more pain with this and it's just getting worse over time, you're not able to fix it on your own, you do need to seek out professional help with this. So as this progresses, it's only gonna involve more structures as they try and compensate for your error. And the hard part is you may not know if it's an instability error or if it's a mechanical error for you. But if you seek out a professional help, someone who knows what they're doing, has a lot of experience with shoulders, they can develop a, a tailored treatment program for you that can address the deficits. So that way you make sure that this doesn't progress and become something worse over time. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative. If you liked it, give us that thumbs up or hit that subscribe button. As always, thanks for watching. So the low hanging fruit here is gonna be to watch our video. <laughs> Why are you laughing at low hanging fruit? <laughs> <laughs> I can try it again. Tell me to try it again. We'll do it your way. All right, so if you are, <laughs> I saw you smile in the back, like <laughs> laughing at me getting amped up. Where was I at the very beginning? Got it. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't even started yet. <laughs>